read the word. Remember tomorrow afternoon? Is that right? But you know where I mean. It's about 50 miles up the road. In the book of Exodus we read tonight from the, um, the 12th chapter of Exodus and the 12th verse and the 13th verse. I believe it would be nice if we stood while we read the word in respect to God. Exodus 12, 12. Or I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. Against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be unto you for a token upon the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we pray tonight that we'll examine ourselves and see if the blood is sufficiently and in sight. As we speak on thy word, may the Holy Spirit guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. You be seated. Our scripture reading tonight takes us back in Exodus. Exodus is an outgoing. And this we're all acquainted with the, the time and for the context. I'm going to take the subject of the token. A token. What is a token? A token is a sign of a that a price has been paid. Like a railroad company or a bus fare. When they run a bus line, you go in, many of the cities still have it. You can, our ticket is a token. If you go to a railroad company and, or an airplane company and buy a ticket, it isn't the money that you give in when you go, it's the token. Your ticket or your little token that you have, shows that you have purchased a required price. They require a certain price, and this price has been paid. In the subject we're speaking on tonight, God's requirement for Israel, requirement of Jehovah, was the blood of a lamb. That was his requirement, and it was to be for a token. The token showed that the requirement had been met. That what God had required had been met. What the railroad requires, the token shows it's been met. Your fare is paid. You're ready to get on the train, plane, bus, whatever it is. But you must have the token. You can't go on without the token. Many of the companies will not receive your cash. When you go out the airplane, walk out there and say, I want to pay my ticket, you go get your ticket first. You must have the ticket. And just the token is what you must hold. The money itself will not work. You must have the token. The life was gone out from the sacrifice, and now the blood was a token. His orders had been carried out. That's what it was in Egypt, that dreadful night. Just before death struck, the last plague, God had showed his great signs and wonders in Egypt, his long suffering and kindness to Pharaoh and all of his people. He sent many great signs through the land. He sent them a prophet, showed them signs and wonders, a pillar of fire, all that he had did, and yet all that he had did, yet they would not repent. They would not come to God. They ignored all of his signs. They ignored his prophet. They ignored the message. They wanted their own way. So God had been fed up with them. So he said, I'm going to make a separation now between those who do believe and those who do not believe. I think we're living in that time now. Yeah. Or Amen. God's making a choice. Man will believe or they won't believe. And God required a token. This token was an innocent lamb that he had substituted for death in the Garden of Eden. And now when the lamb was killed, the blood was to be placed upon the doorpost and on the lintel. And it was a, a, to show that the requirement had been carried out. Oh, I think that's a great lesson for us as we look at it. See the believing worship as he was identified by the token of the blood. He had to, the believer had to get the lamb, slay the lamb, a lamb for a house, take the blood with hossip, which is just a little brush that grows up there in the country, and, and they common weeds, we'd call it, and had to apply the blood. It shows by the applying of the blood with this hossip, 
Hasif represents faith. Many times people think they have to have some supernatural faith to be a believer. It isn't. The Hasif speaks for that. This common weeds that you could get it anywhere, pick it up, dip it in the blood and apply the blood. The blood tonight is applied by simple faith, just not nothing supernatural. It's right around you everywhere. Just simply like a child, reach out and get a hold of it and apply the blood. The hustle is just a simple childlike faith for the believer. It isn't something out of your reach. You don't have to reach very far to get it. This hustle that grows in that country, it grows out of the cracks of the walls, a little kind of a diamond-shaped leaf. You can pick it up anywhere, just as, as grass or weeds would be in, um, in the country here now. Just pick it up, apply it, put it on the door. That's the way faith is to be applied. Take faith, I rather, and apply the blood of Jesus Christ by faith to the heart's door. This was going to separate and make the difference between those who were going out of Egypt and those who were going to stay in Egypt and perish with Egypt. It made the difference. Strange how God always works through signs, signals, tokens, and so forth. He always has done it. That's his way of doing anything. He never does it outside of that. God never makes a move until He does it in that way. The way God starts, that's the way God finishes. Amen. He's infinite, omnipotent, omnipresent, omnipotent. He needs nobody's help. He doesn't need our interpretation. I was said last night, He doesn't need us to interpret the Word and say what it means. He speaks what it says it'll do. That's the interpretation. Amen. Nobody has to interpret it. When God says, let it be, and it is, that's His interpretation of it. We might say the days of miracles is past. There is no such a thing as a baptism of the Holy Spirit. A man who believes it, God speaks to him, and that's the interpretation. Amen. They got it. That's, they know they have it because God gives his own interpretation to his word. That's what he was requiring that night, to separate the believers from the unbelievers. The believer worshiper was identified with his sacrifice. He must apply the blood. It wasn't take and kill the lamb, set the blood out there somewhere, or keep it in a charger, take it down to the neighbors. He had to apply the blood. That's the way it is tonight. We could come and sympathize with everything God does. That isn't what He requires. You've got to apply it. It's not sufficient until you apply it. The blood must be applied. That shows that you are identified. The worshiper laid his hand up on the lamb and then killed it. Identify himself with the sacrifice. The same thing we do tonight is lay our hand up on our sacrifice and identify ourselves with Him, and He is the Word. We have to be identified only through Christ is when we're identified by the Word, because He is the Word. Always has been. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us the same yesterday, today, and forever. So much Word is lauded to each generation. God sends someone in there and identifies that Word by His interpretation of himself. Creeds and things has always had the church in such a turmoil. Everybody said, well, this is the way and this is the way and this is what you must do. But God comes in and steps on the scene and makes what he said come to pass. That's the interpretation. Needs nobody to tell. Not sinful men or organizations or any great big uh, denomination or anything else to interpret the word. Some bishop, archbishop, pope or something. That isn't it. God does his own interpreting. When he promised it, he does it. I've said many times when he said, let there be light, and there was light. That's the interpretation. It doesn't need any more uh, to anything else to try to interpret it. God interprets itself. This blood being applied and uh, identified worshiper identified himself with the blood by applying it in his own house, over the door, where he could not go out or come in without being recognized by the blood. A very perfect type of the day of the blood of Jesus Christ. Then the blood was a token of identification. Christ is a token of the identification of a believer today. Animal life, them days, the reason they had to apply the chemical blood, take it up on hyssop, place it up on the doorpost and the lintel, is because the animal, the worshiper, that put his hands and identified himself with the animal, the life that was in the animal could not return back upon the worshiper because the animal doesn't have a soul. He doesn't better himself at all. We find out today that we man, although fallen, in this fallen state, we build our houses better. We build a better car. We take what God has created, pervert it, and turn it into something to help ourselves. It goes to show that we are sons of God. In our fallen estate, yet we have a soul. We cannot create like God did. 
But we can take what he created and make a similar creation out of what he's already created. An animal doesn't do that. The dog still lives in the same way he lived. The bird still builds a nest and the fish has his spawning grounds. There's no difference. That because why? They don't have a soul, but proves that man is in the image of his creator. Therefore, that when the animal died and the blood was broken, the cell was broken, the life is in the blood cell. And when the blood cell was broken, the blood broken up, the worshiper had to take the chemistry of the blood and put it up on the door so it could be seen with the literal eye. Because the life that was in the animal could not come back upon the man not having a soul. Therefore, it wouldn't mix with the soul of a man. An animal's life won't come back upon the human being. Now, our sacrifice today, not only an ordinary human being, but it was God Himself that was identified in flesh here upon the earth. Well, that blood cell was broke not only to the soul of a man or a, a spirit of a man, but God Himself, who was identified in that man, returns back upon the believer in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's the token that God requires today. The token of the day that we have to have must be the Holy Spirit. That's God's required token. We'll prove it to you by the Scriptures. Without the Holy Spirit, you do not display the token. That's the token shows that, the, that you have identified yourself with the sacrifice and God has sent you back the token to show that you've been accepted. Until that's done, no matter how good you are, how much you know, how much a college professor, good person, preacher, whatever it might be, you are absolutely not recognized until you can show the token. Israel, in that exodus as they come out that time, they had to have the token to prove that they was identified with their sacrifice. And tonight God requires the baptism of the Holy Ghost for proof that we've been identified in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's nothing short of it. The Bible teaches it plain, and we must believe it. It's God's Word. God's requiring it. We're having an exodus again. We all know that. Israel is marching to the Promised Land. So will the bride go to her home pretty soon. Now we find out the blood was a token and, a, and was identified. Everyone was identified by the blood. The Holy Ghost is our token today to identify us by with Jesus Christ in His resurrection. The blood being applied by faith. The chemistry of the blood could not sprinkle every heart. We know that. Because it was shed on Calvary. It bathed the ground. But out when that blood cell was broke, it released God through the sanctifying power that the blood had to come back to believers. God in the beginning was God the Father who lived above all. Just like the, the pillar of fire that led the children of Israel through the wilderness. He'd come down upon the mountain. If anybody touched the mountain... Because he must be killed. God's holy. And he cannot condone sin in no manner. And the man that touched that mountain died. Even a beast had to be thrust through. When God came down, he was holy. Then God condensing come down and was made in the form of a man that we could handle him, touch him, the Bible says. In that teeny little blood cell, many Jews want to say he was a Jew. Many of us want to say he was a Jew. He was neither Jew nor Gentile. He was God. He was a created being by the hand of Almighty God. He created the tabernacle he lived in, which we know as the Son of God. That's right. The deity, supreme deity of Jesus Christ caused God dwelt in him. Peter said, Ye man of Israel, Jesus of Nazareth, a man made known by God with signs and wonders you took with wicked hands and crucified him. We were witnesses of his resurrection when the Holy Ghost had been poured out upon man. Now we find out that in this great thing, that is God was identifying himself with Israel back there and requiring that identification... Now we find out here, the Jews could say, they might say, well, now wait just a minute. I am, um, I, I'm a Jew. I'm, I'm in the covenant of Abraham. I'm circumcised. The covenant had, was annulled if the token wasn't displayed. Think of that. I'm talking of a token of this day. If that blood wasn't displayed, that token, I don't care how much you could show you was a Jew, how much you said you believed, you might have been rabbi, priest, or anything, but that token had to be applied. Amen. Hallelujah. No ins or out, yes or no. Until he saw the blood, he would pass over. Some fellows might say, come aside here, I can prove I was circumcised at eight days. The priest has record of it. My name's on the book. Up there, that didn't have one thing to do with it. The, the token was a, a, if the token was not applied, the covenant was an all. It was a non-effect. We must remember that what God says, He never takes back, but He adds to. 
Them of old times you ever say, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already. Amen. He never takes back, he adds to. Amen. He magnifies. That's what he does. All of his works, he continually magnifies them. That's where we're walking from one church age from Luther into West into Pentecost and on and on as we go. As we move on up, God continually magnifies the same word. Just keep it going like that until finally the church will come into the image of Jesus Christ, which will be his bride that he'll take home. Right. thing that we're looking for today. Sure, we realize that the church will go through the tribulation, but the bride won't. She'll be taken out from the church just as, as Israel was taken out of Egypt. We find out now that the Holy Spirit was the one now that identifies us with Jesus Christ. The Jews might say, yes, we are covenant Jews. But if they did not have the token, the covenant was of no effect. Same thing now. No matter how good we are, no matter you might say, well, I'm, I've did this and I've done all these things and I've paid my tithes, I've belonged to the church, I do all this. God requires the token. Show that you have been identified with your sacrifice. The one that you claim to have. The one that you believe that you have. Peter said, Repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and to your children and to them that's far off, as even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Who is that sinful man that will change that and say the days of miracles is past? Who will do that and say that God's word was wrong when he said, Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord. For the promises unto you and to your children and to them that's far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, he'll stamp the token up on them. That makes the difference between the believer and the unbeliever. There was those sealed by the kingdom of God and those marked by the mark of the beast. And the ones that was marked by the mark of the beast could not take the seal of God. The same thing's coming in today and we see it right before our own eyes. No matter how good you are, how much you say you're a believer, God required the token. He required it in Egypt. He requires it tonight. He requires it tonight. Still, the token is just as much required in this age as it was in that age. I don't care if you're a Bible student, how well you can explain the Scripture. Satan can do the same thing. But remember, that has nothing to do with it. God requires one thing. That's the token. The token shows that you are identified with your sacrifice, Amen. that you claim that you worship. Amen. 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 That's it. When I see the blood of the token, the blood shall be a token. And I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Death was ready to strike Egypt then at any time. It was a great, tremendous time. God had showed them grace by showing His power, signs. Still they desired not to repent and not turn back. They didn't want anything like that. They didn't believe it. They didn't believe the message that was going on. God had sent them a message. They didn't believe it. They still wanted to go right on the way. They were just a perfect type of today. Same thing. Every spiritual happening and every spiritual sign is a warning from God that something's fixed to take place. If that sign comes from God. If it's man-made, there's nothing to it. But if it's God sent, anyone knows, everyone knows. That God sends a sign, if it's a supernatural sign, He sends a message with that sign. Yes, Always does. He never fails to do that. You see, things that's not signs of God, well, then it won't be nothing. Because God isn't in it. But when God's in it, a message is going to follow that. And that message must be from the Scripture. That must be a scriptural message. It must come, thus saith the Lord. Every spiritual happening is a sign from God. Like the message and the signs of following in this day, like it was in the days of the other days that we pass you in the Bible time. And no other time could this ever be till now. No other time could this message ever come forth till now. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. The message could not be till now. The world wasn't in the condition as, until it's in now. This is the hour that Jesus could appear at any time. The sleeping virgin coming in trying to buy oil. That is that time when the bride went in and the rest of them was left here. Did you ever think what happened? They went right ahead preaching and thinking they were getting souls saved and everything and did not know it. They knew nothing about it. The church of on thinking souls were being saved and everything else. And the church is already the bride sealed away. Don't know it. Certainly, that's exactly what the scripture did. Noah went into the ark. God sealed it out. Truly, and the time will come when men and women will cry to God and even think that they've got something when they haven't. It's exactly right. The Scripture speaks that. 
Likewise, we must remember that God is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. He always sends His signs, His wonders. And then, when He gets ready to do anything, He separates the believer from the unbeliever. Notice, then, how He provides for His promised land people. Look what He did for His promised land people there. To be sure that they would not be mixed up in some kind of an ism. What did He do? He sent a prophet to them, Moses, with a message identifying God's Word. And to identify Moses, he sent a pillar of fire that hung over Amen. Then to give him the perfect assurance, he's required a token. Amen. There's a messenger, the message, and the vindication, and the token, the perfect assurance that they have nothing to worry about. No oh, matter how many plagues strike, what everybody else says, they are sealed away. Israel coming out of Egypt, as I said a few minutes ago, is a type of the bride coming out of the church. When Moses began his ministry, Israel gathered together in one place in Goshen, began to pray because they know that the hour was at hand because they knew something was there. The deliverer had already come. God was working, doing things, showing what he was going to do. They come from all parts of of Egypt, just like they will at the day of his coming. They'll take people out of the Methodist, Baptist, Lutheran, all those who are identified in Christ by the token, God will take them with him when he comes. We read over here in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, 26 verse, if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin, but a fearful, dreadful looking for the fiery judgments which will devour the adversary. That is, if we disbelieve willfully, after we have a knowledge of the truth, there is no more sacrifice for sin. Think of it. No matter what you're thinking in your heart, the token can never be applied. If you reject it the last time, then it cannot be applied. For he that sins or disbelieves willfully. As we see the great end signs and times are coming as we are now with the promise of the word. Every word that's been promised to us before the end time, we're laying right in it now. Even to the marking of the beast and the denominations getting together and, and the papal ring coming in and everything. Just exactly the way it is. The world's hanging down there. The atomic bombs is in the hangars. And God's speaking to his servants Amen. into the churches and pulling them out and showing the signs that he promised he would do just before he's coming. We're at the end time. A token is required. Yes, sir. Now we know that those things are true as they was. They were only a type of what we're going through now. As we see these great signs coming at the end time, warning us the time is at hand. Don't sin willfully. Don't disbelieve willfully. If there's something in you, that say, well, now, I don't see where I need the Holy Ghost. I might not need it. I believe when I believed, I got it. Paul said to the people that asked that question, he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you have believed? The Holy Ghost is a token. A man believes God. That is true enough. But the Holy Ghost is a gift of God. It's something different in your faith. Your faith applies it. That's exactly right. But the Holy Ghost is the witness. We'll see just in a few minutes how it works and what takes place where we can be sure where we know where we're right or not. It warns us that the time is at hand. We should love one another. During this time, the church and the believers should be inseparable. Believers... Believers should separate themselves from all the things of the world. Everything that's ungodly, the believer should separate himself from it. Notice, they were not just to come together to talk about it and say, we believe it. They were come together to apply the blood. Amen. Not come say, oh, sure, I believe that. Walk home. They had to come and apply the blood that the token might be seen. Get beneath it. That's today. We sit and hear the message preached. We read it out of the Bible. We say, oh, yes, I believe that. That ain't what God requires. No matter how much you believe it, you've got to have it. Church, wake up, America. This is your last hour. Judgment lays in the balance under for this nation. If God would let this nation get by with what it's done now, he'd be obligated to raise up Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize for burning them up. That's right. We are going to pay for our sins. We are doing the same thing they did in Sodom. And God has sent down message just exactly the way he did in Sodom. Just exactly sent. One to the church out there and the lot group and to Sodom. And he sent to the elect and so forth and proved it that the church is setting exactly in the condition it was in the days of, of Lot. And Jesus said it would be again. Friends, it's on our hands. What are we going to do with it? You say blood on your hands? Yes. What do you think Oswald thought when he was sitting in that room the other day but taking the blood 
of his fellow man shooting the president in assassination. And he's standing there and he had to face that federal court. When that Supreme Court would look on him with angry eyes, knowing that on his hands was the blood of the president of the United States, he is in a sweat box. What order to do to a man when you know you've trampled over the blood of Jesus Christ and refuse to do it, sitting in a sweat box? Not only will you be judged by a Supreme Court, by an angry God that can cast the body away and throw the soul into hell. Stop. Look. Listen. Take heed. We just trample on easy and think he's so loving. A young fellow said today, God loves me so well. God is a good God. That is true, but He's a God of anger too. He's a God of judgment. He's a God of wrath. We fail to get that you make Him so good to you. Make Him some old doty grandpa. He's not no doty grandfather. He's almighty God. And He don't have no grandchildren. He has sons and daughters of God. Now, shake hands and adopt it in. You must be born again in the blood of pride. It's sons and daughters of God. Not some old soft grandfather let his kids get by, grandchildren get by with anything. He's not a grandfather. He's a father. Yes, sir. Every child must be born of him. He's a father of correction. We know that this hour, sure, judgment is at hand. What are we going to do with it? I'd hate to have his blood upon me. There's only one way you could ever get it off of you. You can't wash it off. Pilate tried that. He tried to pass the buck on to somebody else and said, send him on over to a Caesar or someone else like that and to see what he does. It back bar. It fell right back in his lap again. Right? And today we try to say, I would if my husband, I would if my wife, I would if the, my church back bars right back on you again. When you say, oh, well, my church believes this. But when Jesus Christ comes down in these meetings and identifies himself in the scripture that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, I don't care what your interpretation is. It backfires out in your lap and it's on your hands. Not a thing, brothers and sisters, you can do. Friends, remember this, you of California. You're at the end of the West Coast. Your civilization travel with it. And all the riff raff is blowing in. The next thing you'll go to Israel when the church is taken up. Take warning! Only one way you can get the blood of Jesus Christ off your hands is put it in your heart. Yes. Only one way. It'll never work no other way. So when I see the blood, when it's applied in the right place. Well, you say, I bleed the blood. What if they throw it out in the backyard? What if they put it on the chicken house? What if they throw it on the garage? No, it had to be applied at one certain place. That was on the lintel in the heart. That's where God wants the blood today. Not on your hands, but on your heart. God wants it. And it's on your hands today. If you haven't accepted him and got the seal in your heart, it's on your hands. His identification of his scripture in this last days puts it right back on our hands. What can we do with this Jesus that's called Christ? What are we going to do with it? Only one thing is display his blood by letting it be on our heart by the Holy Ghost. We are responsible. Any of us that's not beneath that blood, God is not responsible for it. Not even one. All the whole family had to come. Not just one member. Say, well, Dad's a good man. He's a preacher. I'll be saved. No, sir. Your godly father and mother has nothing to do with you. You're an individual. I belong to the Holy Church. That church, the church has nothing to do with you. There is no such a thing as a holy church. There is no such a thing as a holy person. There's a Holy Ghost with the people. The Holy Ghost in the church. No holy mountains. No holy places. It's the Holy God. Amen. Not you being holy, me being holy. It's He that's the one that's holy. Amen. We are responsible to Him, not to the church. We are responsible to God and to His Word. And God is the Word. The Bible said He was. We're responsible to that. That's Jesus Christ. Notice what He did then. We find out that the whole family only was safe when the token was displayed. When the token was displayed, they were safe. Look in second chapter of Joshua. We find out here that a believing harlot by the name of Rahab, a Gentile harlot, over across the river, when they come into the promised land, the spies went over to spy out. All of her family was saved under the token. That only, remember, God's destroying angel honored that token. When the churches went out, the mayor fell, the city went out, the king went out, the governor, the educated, the pretty women, the handsome man. The important, the all sufficiency, and everything went down that wasn't under that token. Yes. Amen. So will it be in the coming of the Son of God. His destroying angel will destroy everything who hasn't got the token of the baptism of the Holy Ghost upon them. 
to show that you've been identified and died yourself to your sacrifice and are born into the Spirit of God and sealed there by the Holy Ghost. Only one God and He's the only one who speaks the right word and this is it. No one other can take anything from it. Notice, Jericho had heard what God was doing. Jericho had heard the words. Remember what the harlot said? We have heard how God did great things. I fear. Will you just spare me if I'll show kindness to you? Jo- and the Caleb and, and, and Joshua had told him what to do. How to apply this scarlet cord and stay on it. We're not responsible for one person. Say, can I bring my father in? Can I bring my mother? Can I bring my brothers, my sisters, my neighbors? Bring all that you can get under it. That was the same today, brother. It isn't, can we bring Methodists? Can we bring Baptists? Can we bring Pentecostals? All that's ready to come under it, God will accept you. That and that alone will only identify you with Him. Notice, yes, His great powers and signs that He had done down there. And they seen it and know, why can't we have women and man today just as honest as that woman was? When we see what God promised to do and see Him doing it, then next thing come judgment. They must believe they were, they were, they believe, they must have believed they were safe in that great wall where were, where they were at their great big family, their great big place. Many people today, I say this through reverence and respect, many people today say, I belong to the biggest church there is in the city. My mother belongs to that church. It's one of the oldest churches that don't have one thing to do with it. The, the token has got to be applied. They might have thought that big thing they lived in, that big system, that was going to save them. But we find out everything that didn't show that token perished in the city. So will it be at the coming of the Son of Man. He's done said so. There must have been some of them tape boys or somebody slipped into the place down there and played some tapes to them or something other and found the predestinated. She took all of her house and used it for a church and received the messengers. Then when they got all in the city that would come under it and believe the token, when she got all of it in there, then the destruction come. When God's wrath destroyed that big system they had down there, the token sign held her house safe. The token sign, not nothing else. No matter how much societies and how many good uh, Red Cross things they had, which is all good, how much of this and how many charity organizations, everything perished that wasn't under that token. Now think of it. Everything perished. I don't care how big a church they had, how big a denomination they belonged to, it was the king's palace. Everything perished. And so did everything perish in Egypt that wasn't under that token. Now, God doesn't change His ways. He's got a token today. My brother, sister, you better receive it. You better have it. Just remember, it's a warning. Look, the same life that the token did, uh, in, the same thing that the uh, token did in Egypt. It spared everything that was under, everything without it perished. Joshua is a type of Jesus, which Joshua means Jehovah Savior. So does Jesus mean Jehovah Savior. Joshua was true to the token sign that his messengers had preached. So will Jesus be true to the token sign that his messengers preached when he comes. All under it was saved in Egypt. All under it was saved in Jericho. What about today? We find out the Lamb's blood was a type of Jesus Christ. All right, in Hebrews 13, we find this. It is uh, called there the everlasting covenant. God had a covenant with him. But the blood now is an everlasting covenant, the blood of Jesus Christ. God's blood-bound promises makes us free from sin and self, makes us free from anything in the world, no matter how much we try to fashion it the world. It's all dead if we're in God's blood-bound promises. We see nothing but the blood. How could they look out that door without seeing the blood? How can you look out at anything without seeing first the blood of Jesus Christ? If you're in Christ, you see that? To worship Him and to show forth His promises in power. He promised these things to come. His blood-bound people are in Him, sealed in there by the Holy Spirit, and are looking only at the blood and the promise. They can't look at the world. They're dead to the world. The world's dead to them. And to see Christians today who can do anything that the rest of the world does, act like them, swear like them, drink like them, smoke like them, and root in the pig pens of sin and dance halls and things like them, and still say they are Christians? You can't do that, friend. 
That's the reason people can't believe the power of God. They can't believe the signs and wonders. They done died to those things and are, are resurrected over here in the world. But those who are dead to the world are raised in Christ and are looking for His promise. The New Testament means new covenant. The blood life, the blood life itself is the token. The life out of the blood is the token. Remember, in the Old Testament, the actual blood of the Lamb had to be applied. Here, it's the token of the blood. It is the life from the blood that's in the person for the token. Oh, my, the new token is the new life that comes through Jesus Christ when His blood was shed to sanctify a church and fill it with His presence that He might manifest His Word and His promises to the people. God in sundry times and divers manners, Hebrew 1, said He spoke to the fathers, to the prophets, but in this last day through His Son, Jesus Christ. What is His Son? The Word. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And this is the revelation, the completeness of Christ. Whoever will add one word to it or take one from it, the same will be taking his part out of the book of life. There is a revelation. We only need the token with us to make that word live again. That's what he sent the token for. He give us a statement. Give us that statement. And we know it's the truth. The new token shows Jesus has met every requirement for us and is here the new token, the token of the Holy Spirit shows that we know that Jesus died to free us from all the things of the world, and the token that is upon us proves it by vindicating what he said. Now, how can a man claim to hold that token in front of him and deny what this Word says? It isn't so. It can't be so. God can't lie about His own Word. And because He is here, we have the, uh, the right to all that He purchased for us. Notice, what was the token to do? To purchase. It's a price that's been paid. When you have the token, you have a right then to present that token to anything that He purchased for you. And no one can buy it without it. It's only can be purchased by the token. Remember, if you went out here at the bus line and say, Here, I'll tell you, I got a, I got a token that says another bus line. That won't work. I got a token that says it come from Maine, from New Hampshire. It won't work in California. You've got to have the token of that bus line in yeah. order to purchase. shows that you have purchased that fare on that bus. And when we can display the token of the Holy Spirit, shows that we have been accepted in Christ. And that is our token that all that we have need of is already purchased. By him. We are identified with our token. The token must be ready. Covenant blood is not recognized without the token. The word assures us of the promise. The token is the sign the purchase has been made for us. Full obedience to the full word of God entitles us to the token. No other way is there that you can ever be entitled to the token until you fully obey the word. Not what somebody's put into it and added to it, but what God said about it. When He said, you must be born again, that don't mean jump up and down at the altar. That don't mean walk back there and shake hands with the pastor. That don't mean all this foolishness that we've seen done. It don't mean putting your name on a church book. It means death to your first being and life to the second being. It means that the blood has been applied and you're identified by the life of Jesus Christ. And if he be the vine and we be the branches, the life that's in the branch is in the also from the vine. It'll bear the fruit. If that first branch come forth, that branch out of that vine, the wrote a book of Acts behind it. If that branch ever puts forth, a vine puts forth another branch, they'll write another book of Acts behind it because it's the same life. If a, one of your grape vines out here brings forth blue grapes, if it puts forth another branch, it'll bring forth blue grapes. I tell you today, we got so many grafted vines into it with denominations and creeds and things. And yet, any citrus fruit grafted in can live. Live in that vine. But it's bearing the wrong fruit. What we need today is another baptism of the Holy Spirit and have the real power of God that identifies the works that Jesus Christ promised for this day. Not so much as that day, this day. The promise that He made here. That's what He promised there. He poured out His Spirit. Now he's promised it again in the last days. And what he would do. Strange that we can always look back, but you never look ahead. That's the way with man. He's always saying, glorifying God for what he did do. 
praising him for what he's going to do and ignoring what he's doing. That's always the way of man. It's still the same thing. Full obedience to the Word brings God, the Word eternal, in you, and that is the token. When the Word is in you, it's Christ in you. Now, notice. When, then when we pray, if we have the token, and when we pray, we have the token, we are present our token with our prayer. Now, if you're sick, if you're a sinner, if you're in need, when you have the token, you have a right. If I had the token to a bus line in my hand, they can't keep me off of that bus. They've accepted my money. I have the token. In this case, I could not pay my price. You could not pay it. But he paid it for us. And give us a token. Hey, man, I have a right to divine healing. Jesus Christ died that I could have divine healing. I have a right to claim every promise in that book. When, when you get it, when you have the token and can represent the token with your prayer. If you haven't got it, the sign of the full obedience, the fair is paid. Paul tells us the blood speaks. Blood speaks, did we say? Does the blood speak? Can it speak? That token speak? Yes, sir. If we, if we look in Genesis 4.10, the voice of the blood of Abel cried out against Cain. We find out in Hebrews 12, 24, that the blood of Jesus Christ speaks better things. The blood speaks. How can the chemistry speak? It's a life that's in the blood that does. The soul that was in Cain that cried out, it was, or enabled, it was the life. It was in Christ that cries out better things than any. It speaks and it speaks loud. It's the Holy Spirit. It speaks plain. It tells us that the time is here when we see it. For it said it would say it. And then we see it come back and identify what it said. It's, there's nothing else left but to believe it. That's right. To receive it. Believe for self and apply the token also for the family. Like they did in Egypt. And like they did at Jericho. Acts 1631. We find out Paul told the, the Roman to be baptized. Calling upon the name of the Lord. Him and his house could be saved by doing the same thing. Move out. Some people want to apply the blood and stay in. You apply the blood and kick all the trash out of the house and have a house cleaning time. You women take off them shorts. You men throw away them cigarettes. You women too. Get all this old stuff out of the system here that's called the world. If you love the world or the things of the world because the love of God's not even in you. When you're ready to apply the token, empty up and get ready for it. You can't serve God and mammon at the same time. Women come along, I've passed across this country. I've made remarks about Miss Kennedy with her Jezebel haircut and all like that, and her big waterheads, and these women. I wonder if Miss Kennedy would have heard the messages I preached. She might have let her hair grow out a long time ago. But I've crossed this country back and forth, showing by the word that it's wrong and a condemnation for women to cut their hair, and the Pentecostal women continue to go on the same way. She might rise in the day of judgment not knowing it, but you know better. It shows the blood hasn't been applied. The token's not there. Long hair is a Nazarite vow. It showed that you've cut yourself from the world to obey the word. Amen. Amen. Samson let his hair grow out for a Nazarite vow. Now we're realizing these things in women dressing and acting and doing it in man, permitting him to do it. Big bunch of sissies. It seems like there's not even men anymore. You see men wearing pink shoes and, and preachers on the pulpit, something like that. That's a disgrace. I like to see men again that's absolutely man. Look like there's a power that drives them to do it. It's a devil in the pressure of this day. Right. Sometime a man weighing 200 pounds and muscles like that, not an ounce of man in him. Looks like some big sissy out here. I like let man be man. Let women be feminist. Let them be ladies. When their tokens applied, they turn back to that. God made them different and they are different. Man wants to look like women. Women wants to look like man. It goes to show there's a perversion, a dark spirit hanging over gross darkness over the people. It's the hour of the calling out. There's a darkness over Egypt before the calling out. Then the token was applied. It's time for the church to get the token. Or gross darkness is upon the people. Gross darkness. Yes, clean out the cupboard. Clean out the house all we have a good old-fashioned house cleaning. Let the blood be applied and then the token will come in. Clean it out. Sanctify it. Then apply the token in prayer with confidence when you've cleaned yourself up. 
You got away from the things of the world. You dumped all the unbelief out. I don't care what the people says. If the Word of God says it and promises it, I believe it. If the Word says it, that settles it. I don't care what anybody else says. See, then when you got all that done, you've applied the blood and you believe every word, then take your token in prayer. Be fully convinced. We read in, in Ephesians uh, second chapter 12 verse about what God said about it when we applied this token. Notice, serving the living God with living works and with living signs, with a living token, not dead works and carnal not dead works. Hebrews 9, 11, 14 tells us again the same thing. Not dead creeds, but a living token. They, these creeds deny that there is such a thing as a token. They don't even believe there is such a thing as a token, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But we who believe the Word know better. No, and it's His living presence for us in this day. We separated from dead works, and the Holy Ghost comes in to confirm the Word and make it so. Hebrews 13, 8 proves that to us. Proves that God has raised Him up for us according to His promised Word. Thousands of years has passed. Two thousand years almost has passed. But what is it the token still holds? That God raised him up on the third day. If you just got the word, that's all you got. But when the token is applied, then Christ is reality to you. And he does today like he did then. So it throws it right back in their lap again. They can't get around it. God promised it and here it is. But the token's got to be applied. You take the token and and we accept his sacrifice blood. Then... He gives us life, the life of the token, and it is a promised seal. Ephesians 4.30 Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of your redemption. Then being baptized into Him, 1 Corinthians 12, we become part of His body. And in Him is the fullness. In Him is all the sufficiency that we have need of. He is my pleasure. He is my life. He's my joy. He's my... He's for... Not I don't have to puff on a cigarette to get some kind of a relief. I take the lily of the valley. He's the opium. He's the thing that, that makes me walk in the clouds. He's my all-sufficient. He's my hopes. He's my rest. He's my God. He's my Savior. He's my healer. He's all that I have need of because I die. We die in Him and are baptized in Him. And in Him is all sufficiency. Listen close while I make this closing remarks. If Satan tries to hand you some of this stuff like sickness, you know what you do? Just show him the token. I am a purchased product. My healing has been paid for. I am a product of God because I have the token of the Holy Ghost. You cannot keep me off of this highway. You cannot keep me from my health. I present the token and show you that my by His stripes I was healed. Here's the resurrection of Jesus Christ right in me now to prove it to you. Oh, there's a real thing. There's the token. That's the reason people don't believe it. That's the reason it's hard for them to see it. The token has never been applied. See, that's the reason all days of miracles has passed. You're doing that for a blind. Jesus said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. How far? To all the world. To every creature. In my name they shall cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. Take up serpents or drink deadly things that won't harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Apply the token. And then claim your rights. Shake it before Satan. The bus driver says, say, the airplane man says, say, you can't get on this plane. There's a token. Amen. You're too ragged. You're not, you're rags. You're too poor. We don't take little man, big man, but I hold the token. Amen. You can't keep me off of it. Hallelujah. Give me the token. That settles it. I have a right as the rest of them have. I have a right. Just the same as Paul had. I have a right 
The same that any man was ever baptized with the Holy Ghost. I got the same right because I got the same token to show the same God purchased my same thing. There you are. The blood. The blood. The token. Not the blood chemistry, but the token. The Holy Ghost. The life out of the blood. It comes. What does that life do? Comes and confirms what the token has been purchased for. The token confirms what the, the blood bought for you. The blood purchased your redemption. The token is an evidence of it. The blood, he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. Just time our peace upon him with his stripes we were healed. See, all blood, blood, blood. Then when the token comes, it shows that you've been identified with that sacrifice. Man, the devil can't keep you from it. That's when I stand at a platform here to face everything there is around the world and devils. God's Word promised it. As long as I can, though that blood has been applied and holding that Holy Spirit here in my heart, the devil has not one word to say against it. Yes, sir. We'll walk where the apostles have trod. Yes, sir. Because the token paved the way. The token is the evidence that the way has been paid and we've accepted it. And to prove it, God gave us the token. The sign that we was received. A minister said to me one time, said, Brother Branham, Abraham believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness. I said, that's true. He said, what more can a man do but believe? I said, that's exactly right. Then where do you get this Holy Ghost outside of believing? I said, but he gave him the seal of circumcision as a confirmation of his faith. Yes. Amen. And if he's never given you the baptism of the Holy Ghost yet, then he hasn't confirmed your faith that you say you have. But the token is a confirmation. I say, I got the money. I paid it in the office down there. But you've got to show the token. Yes. That's right. When I show the token, I got a right. And when I can show the token of the Holy Spirit, you've got the right to any purchase thing that Jesus Christ died oh, for. Amen. It's the token. Watch just a moment as we close. Hold the token over your unwavering faith in the promised word. I believe that Jesus said, Ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. Hold your token over that promised word and walk right to it. I'm the Lord who heals all thy diseases. He was wounded for my transgressions with his stripes. I see Take my token of the Holy Spirit that's in me. Hold it over my prayer and say, Lord God, you promised it. When I see the token, I will reward you. I promise to do it. He can't do nothing else. He looked right through the blood of his own son. There's a token applied. He has to do it because he promised it. He could not go into a house, the death angel destroyer, and take one out. He couldn't do it because there was the blood of the Lamb, the requirement of Jehovah, and the requirement of him today is the blood of his own son, Jesus Christ, and the token of the Holy Ghost. If we haven't got it, we might be Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Pentecostals, whatever we might be. We might shout, scream. We might... Be also educated that has not one thing to do with it. Amen. You must present the token. Yes. Then you're a subject for the resurrection. Because the resurrecting power is already in you. The token is the resurrection power showing that Jesus raised up from the dead. And you're raised from the dead. The dead things of unbelief and have been made alive in the word of Jesus Christ. You believe it. And the Word lives through you. If ye abide me in my Word and you ask what you will. St. John 14, 12. He that believeth in me, the works that I do, he shall do also. Greater than this shall he do because I go to the Father. A little while in the world seeth me no more, yet you shall see me because I'll be with you even in you. How did he not the body is sitting at the right hand of the master, but the token that you have received it and he's given it back to you. Take that token and claim anything you wish to. Amen. I've promised it. I've always said I met two classes of people. The fundamentals and the Pentecostals. The fundamentals positionally studied the scriptures and figured out. They say, well, we're sons of God. They believe that. Yes, sir. But they don't have any faith with it. But the Pentecostals has a lot of faith and they don't know they're sons of God. Like a man got money in the bank, can't write a check, and the other can write a check, got no money in the bank. If you could just ever get the thing together to man and women could realize you that's been truly baptized into the Holy Spirit and you have the token to display, you have a right to every redemptive blessing that God promised. Everything that He promised is yours. 
Hold your token over your unwavering faith as you pray and over his word, faith in his word. God once gave a token to the people and that was a rainbow. Looky, listen close, we're closing. God ever remained true to that token. Way back in the days of Noah at the destruction of the Andalusian world, God gave this nation or give the world a rainbow sign for a token. And God ever displays his token as the thousands of years roll by. He never fails because he watches his tokens. All these thousands of years he's displayed it to us, showing us that he never fails to honor the token. He never fails to honor it. He expects us now to display the token over our faith to Satan's group and the unbelievers and cults and so forth that don't believe in it, that we, believing what he has said of his promises and that Jesus Christ has raised up from the dead, showing himself alive, and that is the badge, the token of identification because it's Christ's own life in you identifying the word. It doesn't need anything else. That's the token. Without the token, shows the fare is paid. Shows that you're subject for the resurrection. That God, that same power that raised up Jesus from the grave, you're holding within yourself as a token. The Holy Ghost in you is the token that brings you from the grave because the token is God, the Holy Spirit, which is eternal life coming from the Greek word zoe, which means God's own life in you. That's the only thing that pays the price. If that token isn't there, how are you going to raise? Brother, sister, tonight, with all fairness to God and to His Word and to each other and to the time that we're now living in, if you're without the token, if you don't have the token, some of you might not even believe it, but it's here. The token has been here since Christ died. Why don't you identify yourself in death to your own thinking tonight and let the thoughts that's in Him be in you. Let the meditation of my heart be acceptable to Thee, O Lord. Let Thy word, if Ye abide in me and my word in you, that is Him, then ask what You will and it will be given to You. Don't you believe that? Yes. Let us bow our heads. How many people in here that knows that the way you live that you really haven't got that token applied. You know it isn't there. You believe it. You absolutely believe it. But you haven't got it. You know you haven't. Would you just raise your hand and say, Pray for me, Brother Bram. Let all heads be down. God bless you. I haven't got it. I haven't, Brother Bram. I've tried to accept it. I believe it, but really it hasn't been applied to me yet. I look in the glass. I see I'm not there. I look at the way I, I feel what's in my soul. I'm full of temper, anger. I'm jealous. I've got all, oh my, that breathe the Holy Spirit from me right now. I tell you, I, I, I do. I see the Word and see it confirmed, but yet I, I've just got a bunch of people that I go with to my church or my society, my card party or something. I just can't give them up. That shows you haven't got the token. If you love the world or the things of the world, the love of God's not come out from among them, the Bible said. Touch not their unclean things. Friends, it can't be made more real than it is now. It can't be. The token is here if we'll believe it. Do you believe it? Will you accept it? Lord Jesus, they're in your hands now. May the token, the token that Jesus is not dead... The token that Jesus raised up from the dead. And he's sure tonight. He's a token of his resurrection. He himself is a word. He is sure to confirm everything he said. He's sure to confirm every promise that he made. If the people could just only see it once, Lord. That it isn't something that we could guess about. It's something we must know, Lord. There's no try over. You can't go back and try again. It must be done now. I pray, God that every person will receive him tonight. And may the token of the blood be applied to every heart. And then may there be a revival come through this country here. That'll be great. Father, we commit it into your hands in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, while we're in prayer, everybody real quiet. Don't go on move now. Just a minute.
Do you believe this is the truth? That the tokens got to be displayed. It had in it every time, every age, it had to be displayed. Now what is the token is a confirmation of his word. That, that shows he is the word. Now the word said he raised up from the dead. And he's alive forevermore. He lives in his people. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you believe that? If you believe that, then you have a right. If you have that token, the Holy Spirit in you, you have a right to everything that his death purchased for you. Won't you believe it? Now look. So now tonight, we wasn't going to pray for the sick tonight. We're going to do that tomorrow afternoon. But we're we're tonight we're just going to make this altar call. Here, friends, if you ever get healed, if you live long enough, you'll go get sick again. But if you one time take that token, you've had it forever. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of your redemption. Not to the next revival, you wasn't sealed. You got emotionally worked up. But you are dead. And your life is hidden in God through Christ and you're sealed by the Holy Ghost. If you are once baptized into that Holy Spirit, now you can backslide. That is true. But you can't get away from that seal. You're sealed into it. Now if you haven't got that seal, let's be real sincere. We've got a place fixed here. And for everybody, we can receive the Holy Ghost. And if He heals the sick, why did He put it up on my heart to do this? Now that same Jesus that was raised up from the dead is right here now. Now listen. The Word can't say one thing and mean another. He said, Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. Is that right? Now look up this way as you do. How many in here are sick? Raise up your hands. Just say, I'm sick. I'm needy. You don't have to be sick. Just say, I have a need of God. Brother Bram, I have need of God for something. I, I, I believe Jesus is here. Now, hold your token right over that desire. Now let me tell you by his word, and he cannot go contrary to that word. He has already purchased your desire, if it's according to his will. And his will is to heal. His will is to give you your desire. He withhold no good thing from them that walk upright before him, presenting that token. Now, you're strangers to me, but just a moment, that you might see. Now here's ministers sitting behind you, people all around. There's belief and unbelief here. It's always that way. You can feel it coming in. But it's anointing of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is that token. He is that token. Now you don't have to do it. Everybody wasn't Moses. There's one Moses. But the people follow it. Now you just believe this. That he is a living today. He's here as a witness. Now each one of you has got something on your heart. Pray. Now, if he was here, you'd say, Lord Jesus, will you heal me? He'd say, I've already did it. See, he couldn't do it again. He's already done it. But he just wants you to believe it. Now, he did promise in the last days that what God did in a human flesh just before Sodom, the end of the Gentile world, it would be repeated again. He promised that. Now, will he keep that promise? He promised Malachi 4 that he would do this and man, manifest his word to turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers again. Back to the original Pentecostal word. The real Bible word, not the, the Pentecostal, they claim the Pentecostal organization, there is no such a thing. Pentecost is an experience, not an organization. They try to organize it, but you can't. It doesn't organize. Pentecost is an experience. It's the seal of God. The Holy Spirit to come on the day of Pentecost. Now you believe. Look this away and believe that I've told you the truth. And if He will manifest Himself, I don't know whether He will or not. But if He will, that will show that the token that I'm talking about, that the blood has been applied... And the token is here to identify that blood is correct, that Jesus Christ has raised from the dead. You believe that? Well, that, how, what more clear could it be? 
Just believe it. Brothers, sister, and friends, in the name of Jesus Christ, believe it. For the sake of your soul and for the sake of others, you'll never have another opportunity. If God would have spoke to me back before the foundation of the world, when I was a thought in His mind, so were you. If He said, what age would you want to live in? I'd say, right now. This is it, the most glorious time that there is. Believe, won't you? Praise God. Now, that you might know that Jesus Christ lives. Now, just in your heart, pray and say, Lord, you're a high priest can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. And I believe that you are a token. Now, speak to me that I might be healed. Somebody, in, go in sections like you can see where, so I won't have to be turning back and forth this way. You notice at times, see a vision, when you see a vision, it has to be interpreted also. It's turned around. So, so sometimes when you've got hundreds of pulling, you can just, it just has to sing aloud. Now, everybody real reverend for just a few minutes. Then that'll prove, if a man says anything and, and, and God don't back it up, well then it couldn't be God. But if God backs it up, then you've got him to talk to for that. Amen. May it happen for the glory of God as I stand here to represent this word to be the truth. There's a man sitting right there. If you, I, I just wish that you could see in this dimension, this life. Now right now, I see something happen. You just pull it out. Like the human part lays aside. That's a gift. And when it does, then it's, it's another world. There's a man sitting there and he's praying. And what's the matter with him? He's had an operation or something in the intestines. And it's been some time ago, but it isn't doing right. I hope he doesn't miss it. But God will help me. I'll call his name. Mr. Price, believe I don't know you, sir. I'm a stranger to you. If that's right, stand up on your feet. If that's right, those, is that true? Yes, sir. Now, don't you see? What is it? It's the token identifying that Jesus Christ raised from the dead and is the same yesterday, today, and forever, working through human flesh just like he did there before Abraham, the elected church, before Sodom. And Jesus said, it shall return again in the coming of the Son of Man. Thank you, Jesus. Here. There's another man sitting here looking right at a real contact. A man is suffering with a stomach trouble and a back trouble. His name is Mr. Flanagan. <laughs> I don't know you, but that's true. That's your wife sitting there by him. She's suffering too. You believe that God's able to tell me now in your fine contact of faith? Your wife has a back trouble and she's got a female trouble. It's in the womb. That's thus saith the Lord. Now what is it? Who is doing that? The Bible said that he is a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. The Bible said the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword and is preaching, cutting to the sunder. Don't pay attention to a celebrity or denomination or anything. And then it also identifies itself as a what? A discerner of the thoughts that's in the heart. Is that right? It's exactly right. If you could only believe it. Just believe it with all your heart. There's a lady sitting right here. She's got tumors. She isn't from here. She's from Sacramento. Her name is Mrs. Bradley. Stand up on your feet if that's right, lady. And we're strangers. Raise your hands if that's right. Is that right? I truly believe they're gone. Right, that's just a woman sitting here. Here's a lady sitting way back here. She's got on a hat, kind of a brown looking hat. Got a She's putting her glasses off. She's sitting there praying. She was praying for something to happen. What makes that woman do that? That woman has just been healed of a heart trouble. She's praying for her brother. And he has heart trouble. And she's got a brother-in-law that's not saved. And she, she's praying for him to be saved. That's thus saith the Lord. 
If that's right, ladies, stand up on your feet so that people can know you. She's sitting right there saying this, praying for them people then. That's right, wave your hand, lady, back and forth so they can see. How could I tell her what she's praying about from the platform here? Here's a man sitting right here. He's suffering with trouble in his knees. He's praying for a friend that's crippled. He, he really, he isn't from here. He's from Santa Maria, a place called Santa Maria. And uh, his name, they call him Tony. Stand up if that's right. I'm a stranger to you. Hold your token before your prayer. God, when that angel of the Lord met me years ago when I first came in here, I took the people by the hand. I told you that he told me this would come to pass. Now there's something greater than that. It is constantly going. Why? Holding that token before that. See, the Holy Spirit itself, it lives. It's the one that does it. He said, now, if anybody's in doubt, go around these people and ask them if I ever seen them, know them or anything else. They're here. It's just going to happen all over the building now. I hear it. If God can discern that, let me tell you something. There's scores of you here tonight that needs the baptism of the Holy Ghost to hold that token. You're, you're, you're just thinking you got it when you have it. Don't take that chance, friends. Believe me. If you believe me to be God's prophet, or pardon me, I didn't mean to say that. I don't call myself a prophet. God's servant. If you believe I'm God's servant, I'm telling you in the name of the Lord, while we bow our heads just a moment, this is a great call. I want every person in here that's not a Christian, come up here a minute, let me pray with you, and lay hands upon you. While the Holy Spirit's on me, while I'm, the anointing is here, the token is displayed. Infallible proof. When you keep real quiet, move out of your seat, come up now. If a sister there, whoever the song leader is, give us a card of music. Now, when you come up and this every person is not a Christian, come up here and stand here at the altar just a moment. Lord bless you, my brother. Lord bless you, sister. Come right up around the altar here. Every person, come every soul now of sin oppressed, there is mercy with the Lord. Now, will you do it? That's right. Come right up here. Stand here just a moment. You without Christ. Look, the hour is getting late, friends. The death angel might separate between the bride and the church at any time. Won't you... Every soul of sin oppressed, there's mercy with the Lord. Won't you come now while they're saying? He will surely give you rest. Why? Giving you the token. Then you're at rest, you see. You have the identification. The Lord sent His message, identified it, the pillar of God. We trust Him only. Christians, you who have the token, pray. Sinners without Christ, will you come while He's so clearly identified here as the token? The token, He's not dead. He's raised from the dead. Will you come now? We'll save you. He will save you now. Only trust just trust Him. You say, Brother Bram, I don't know how to do it. Come up here. This all you have is just raise right up. Listen to the Holy Spirit. That's the way that these things work. Just listen to Him. He promised it. Just as He promised to do these things in the last day, He promised to save the lost. You say, well, I belong to the church, Brother Bram. That ain't what I'm asking you. I'm asking you now, are you saved? Are you a Christian? If not, come up. Come up, I ask you in Christ's name, come up. Only. That's it. Come right in. Come right on around the altar now, brother. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. What do you have to do? Just only trust Him. Only trust Him. That's right. Come right on, friends. Come right on. Every Christian pray right now. Remember, people might come. This might be the last opportunity they'll ever have. This might be. If he can discern the thoughts of the heart, he tells me. 
and it's true. Many in here, don't let Satan deceive you, sister, brother. Don't let him do it. Please don't. Receive God's token tonight. Will you come now? Now, you only trust Him. Only trust Him. Only trust Him. God, I pray that in Jesus' name that you will look down upon this audience and will comb it through. I pray that the great Holy Spirit, who is here now present, showing Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, there's no chance for Satan to try to rub around it. Here you are, you are identifying yourself, standing here in human flesh among us, and identifying yourself by the token that would identify you. The token is to identify Jesus Christ. His resurrection. And here it is now identifying Him. Doing the same that He did when He stood here in a corporal body. Oh, Father God, may the people see and realize how all these scriptures and things are perfectly fulfilled. May every soul come now, Lord. Go once more, Father, and speak to the heart so I'll be sure that... I've asked you, and I know you're going to do it. You always answer our prayers. Speak once more, Lord. I'm sure there was some felt that they should, but they just didn't do it. Grant it, Lord, and they'll come now. Through Jesus' name I ask. With our heads bowed, rise. Won't you and come now while we sing it again now? And come right out, walk out. I just feel down in my heart that's never wrong. Okay. Only trust. Will you raise up? Come down here, stand around. Here. Don't. This might be the last opportunity that you ever have. If that little question's been in your mind, don't don't take no chance. Don't take no chance, friend. See, the rains come and the people didn't know it. The death angel struck. The people didn't think it was so. Moses told him it's going to happen. He was clearly identified by God. You say, but I'm Presbyterian. I'm Methodist. I'm Baptist. I don't. That don't have nothing. See, come. I'm asking you to come now. Come and really receive Him. Don't. You'd be real sure if you checked your tires before you drove fast. Check your car before you take your vacation. Won't you have the identification of the resurrection within you? Won't you come? God bless you. That's fine. Six, seven, eight more has come since then. I just hate to close it like that. Will you come? God bless you, young fella. God bless you, lady. Now. He will save you. He will save you. God bless you, young man. If you want to know you were one of them, that's it. They trust. Isn't that something? Is he? Yeah. See, the Holy Spirit's never wrong. It's perfectly right. He will save you. Are you real sure now as the music continues on, if you will, slowly? Could you trust Him? Could you just take Him at His word? Say, Lord, I've always wanted that close fellowship, that real something. I, I really want it, Lord, but I, I've seen so much mockery of it. Well, sure, that's Satan. He, he does that to throw you off the track. I, I've seen those who claim uh, that, that. See, it only shows there's a real one somewhere. If you find a bogus dollar, it's just because it, it's made off of a good one. See, won't you come? Really trust Him for the Holy Spirit. When He's so identified here before you, identifying Himself here before about 3,000 people. He did it before 500,000 in Bombay. He did it before around 150 or 75,000 in Durban, South Africa, where 30,000 blanket natives come to Christ at one time. The 
gospel's about finished in America, friends. It's just about over. If you believe me to be connected with God, remember that is true. Won't you come now? I'm going to ask our minister brothers here if they'll come off the platform, stand around here with this prayer for the people. The rest of you may bow your heads unless you want to come. Father, just stand around the altar here. I'm going to pray with you. I want you men to get down there because these people will become members of your churches. They've come accepting Christ now. Would you come stand around? Anyone else would like to come at this time? The altar's still open. They might not, it might be too late after a while. Just think the great Holy Spirit coming, identifying Jesus Christ alive after 2,000 years. See the very nature of Him doing the same thing as He promised it would be done. That's right. I'm so grateful for you, friends. You're that 11th hour people standing here, just getting in. I'm so glad you come. Each one of you remember, it was God who told you to come. Humanly, you wouldn't have done it, but God told you to do it. Now, while these brethren here, and I'm praying, may the Lord, if the minister's over here, sure, any ministering brethren come here, you have churches and things around here, come gather around with these people. These are people that strayed from them. Some of them are coming for their first time, and they're standing here now. Walk right up among them. Pull right in among them. Just move yourself right in. Tell them, I'm pastor so-and-so. I'm here to pray with you, brother. I love you. I love you. And I'm here to pray with you. But come up here. Come up this way. Come up this way. There's a room in here. Some of you up this way. Just That's it. Move right in among the people. Say, I'm pastor so-and-so. Put your hand on somebody's shoulder. Say, I come to pray with you, dear sister, dear brother. I come to help you to Christ. Just move right in. Say, I, I'll be glad to do anything for you. Can We're going to pray now. I've asked the congregation if they'll bow their heads with us now while we go to prayer. Each one of you pastors, get you a person. Get somebody that you got your hands on. Each pastor, get among the people so you got your hands on somebody. That's it. Each one of you confess that you've been wrong. And remember, that same Jesus now is right here. So help me. That life is right here among you. He is Christ. Just ask Him to forgive you. And God will cleanse you from every sin. Just stay right there now. And the pastor will lead you right to repentance. And right on to the token. This will settle it. Lord Jesus, we bring to you tonight, Lord, all these witnesses and things the glory of God. That you will heal each and every one of them. Father, this audience... We see you so clearly identified by your word, identified as a person of the Lord Jesus, here in the form of the Holy Ghost, moving through the people, discerning the thoughts that's in their heart, healing their sickness, and calling them to repentance. The great, mighty Son of God, I give them to you, Father, as tokens of their faith in your belief, in your predicted word. The word that you said that you would... I trust, Lord, that you'll confirm it to them. They are yours. They're love gifts. I give them to you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, save every one of them, Lord. Fill every one of them with the Holy Ghost. Grant it, O eternal God. Let your spirit of mercy be upon them.